Good afternoon, everybody. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Evan Geyer. And so my hair, like, I didn't cut it all nice and everything. The store, the, the haircut places are closed. Not that I'll always cut it that way. Anyway, I'm reading from the PowerPoint on the thumb slap, on the thumbnail. Um, just uh, economics thing. Uh, looking at economics currently in the UN, the UN recognizes 195 sovereign countries. Trade throughout those countries is generally global and intertwined. In a world where no resources have hit the key halfway gone or the key peak demand, there is generally always going to be a situation where there is a way to do work and have that result in a better resource situation tomorrow than today. Really, the world needs to hit a halfway gone and hit halfway pass peak demand danger zone where future demand is forced down by supply without replacement from other resources like aluminum to copper or oil to hydrogen this means if an economy is in the case of peak oil we're drawing down stored oil danger zone could actually be delayed until the last of the stored oil was sold however in this scenario the shock would likely be extreme given the drop of the availability and inelasticity of oil as a needed resource for food, travel, energy, and the current developed society of 2020. When a resource hits danger zone, it crowds out the associated development in the case of copper, and wiring in the danger zone would bring prices of copper higher so long as there was no good, cheaper substitute. Even in these cases, alternatives may be behind in supply for a while or have their own danger zone bottleneck. Copper prices would rise and as long as they were in a need, copper would actually rise until it was at just the cost of the project. Not just the cost of the elevated price of the project because less projects could be completed. However, the cost of the elevated price of the project and all its benefits of it, if copper couldn't be recycled or back to the issue in the case of oil where once burnt it has little use except for maybe steam which may pass as well different economies within those 195 countries are going to act differently to different danger zone resource scenarios furthermore yes it is possible to bounce back from a situation of dire with research and development or an adjustment in the means of life Brazil, an economy that uses ethanol, or Saudi Arabia, an economy that is an exporter of oil, would not be affected as much as by danger zone oil as the United States who imports and is relying on oil. They might benefit through the exports, only potentially looking for new places to buy other than the U.S. as the U.S. becomes less efficient and its costs rise. For the most part, global economic health through the 2020 could be seen in the bond market where a price up and yield down environment showed ability to borrow and seemed to reflex risk. These rates were all looked at as risk-free, where pre-danger zone, there was always the potential for more of the resources and inflation enticed purchasing, as the inflation in most cases was fixable. Right, the inflation was fixable through more activity. Then further inflation produced wealth, and the situation continued. There are big players in the market, including at $1.7 trillion asset managers like Black, Black, BlackRock and or Vanguard, not to mention the federal government that saved your Social Security payments for retirement. This coupled with the petrodollar, large companies controlling the landscape, continuously increasing taxes, traffic, and not to mention enough infrastructure capacity or care, in some cases not to mention more and more of the participants in the economy simply having no assets left to give, get, spend, for example, the wage gap or masses renting what's available. This means historically the interest rates in the U.S., including the 10-year, the 30-year interest rate, have signaled a theoretically better overall economy, but also have an economy closer and closer to its peak as they near or pass 0% going negative. Forward-looking guess. You know, there's lots of factors that could change us, but because of the fact that the vast 
last investor would receive the lowest return in bonds if bonds constantly traded price higher and interest rate lower, the rate could be influenced by the government and central government mean lower rates and or volatility should continue to signal an economy with nothing left to borrow. To repeat at 0% rates, one would devise there is nothing left to borrow, almost like a margin call, if, an, if assets fall or you have what you have and hustle, because aside from storage costs, market share, or things like worry or a theft, there is little reason to loan capital at zero return for free. The longer a society stays in this state, if it were substitute, the lower interest rate state, with strains of added population and reduction of consumables, the worse it gets overall. Otherwise, a society might rearrange the resources and continue stagnation absent a breakthrough, noting breakthroughs constrain supplies. The potential theory of an option to trade down. So you could hit a situation where just boom, boom. See ya. And talk to you later.